Hello, we'd like to welcome you to the Contact a Family webinar looking at social media. Um, if there is a technical hitch, please do bear with us. Um, we're trying out this technology on a laptop for the first time. Um, those of you that are joining by um, PC, laptop, tablet or phone should hopefully be able to see this introductory slide now. Because there are quite a few people who have tuned in for this webinar, it's not practical for us to accept questions verbally throughout the um, webinar, so you will all actually be muted throughout the process. But if you do have any questions, please just click on the question icon, and that will allow you to type in the question, and we will be able to see those and hopefully answer as many of them as possible at the end of the session. If we don't have time, then we will make sure that any questions that um, come through to us are actually answered on the Contact Family website along with a copy of this webinar, which will be um, circulated by email next week. There will also be a handout with some examples, social media policies and other documents and other useful links for you as well, which will be available at the same time. At the end of the webinar, there will be a questionnaire that will launch, and if you could please take time to complete this, it would be appreciated. So if we could just introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Sharon Smith, and I'm a um, contact um, a family associate. I'm also the previous chair of Hampshire Parent Carer Network um, and was responsible for looking after some of the social media aspects of um, Hampshire Parent Carer Network at the time. So my name is Amelia and I'm the Digital Engagement Officer for Contact to Families social media channels. So I manage Contact to Families Facebook, Twitter and YouTube channels as part of my role. Hello, I'm Claire Watts. I'm the chair of Bexley Boys for Special Needs Children and also parent care of a child with Down syndrome. And we have a technical hitch, which I'm just going to try and resolve. There we go. Um, so the purpose of this session is that we want to give you an introduction and an overview to um, different social media platforms and to talk about how they can be used for parent care forums. And we want to also introduce you to social media policies, um, what they're for, how they should be used, and to tell you a little bit about the benefits of using social media, but also the downsides and things that can go wrong and how you can try and anticipate those um, and also deal with things that do go wrong, and also to look at roles and responsibilities. So, what is social media? Um, these are the dictionary definitions of social media. But basically, it is an online platform where users are able to interact with each other, to share content, to discuss things with each other. And it is actually a two-way process where people can share and respond and comment on information. And as a forum, you can then build up a dialogue with um, parents locally and also hopefully respond to their needs. And these are just a few examples of social media platforms that are currently available. New ones are popping up all of the time. And the ones we're going to focus on today are Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, because they're the ones that are currently being used by Contact a Family. But the other um, social media platforms are also worth having a look at. So examples of ones on here, like Meerkat and Periscope, are ones that allow live video streaming, which might be useful if you wanted to stream meetings or training courses as well and get people to actually attend those. Within the handout, there will be examples of how to use those. The next few slides are just going to give um, a snapshot, really, of just to tell you a little bit more about internet usage and how people are using the internet currently. Um, there's a link at the bottom of this slide that if you wanted to get more information, you can. This just shows um, worldwide internet usage to show how many people there are and that at the moment worldwide there are 3.4 billion people who are currently using the internet and of those 2.3 billion are active social media users. In the UK we have a population of just under 65 million people and of those people, 38 million are active social media users. So this shows the importance of using social media as a parent carer forum. It's also interesting to look at the number of active mobile social users as well, 33 million. 
So a large percentage of people that are accessing social media are doing so through their mobile devices, whether that's a phone or a tablet. And again, this slide here just gives you an indication of the different ways that people are accessing the internet currently. Um, and as you can see, mobile phones um, are increasingly important in terms of how people are using the internet, along with tablets and laptops. So, 85% of people in Britain who are using the internet uh, for personal reasons access it every day. Um, but what's interesting on this slide is that there is still a small number of people who are not using the internet very, very often. So it's important that any social media strategy that you put together is just part of your overall communication strategy to make sure that you are reaching all of the parents and you're not relying just on social media. And again, this is just a breakdown really for information that shows you how people are using um, social media and how many are using it through the mobile. Put this slide in to show which social platforms are most used in the UK. And as you can see, it's the ones with the yellow bars that are the ones that are social media platforms rather than messenger systems. And the top ones are Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and also then there is Google Plus, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. Facebook by far is the one that has um, the biggest levels of use and is the one that I think most forums are probably going to spend most of their efforts on. But also it's important to look at Twitter as well. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about contact family social media platforms. Um, the stats that you've got up on the screen are a bit of a snapshot um, of uh, how the demographics looked in March of this year. Um, obviously the figures are always kind of changing because our um, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube communities are always growing. Um, but that's a, a fairly recent snapshot. So with Facebook, we've got about 28,668 users as of March, and around 14% are male and 85% female. And as you can see on the screen there, you've also got a breakdown of the um, kind of age brackets. And also, again, um, as Sharon was mentioning, how many people are coming through mobile devices, which is obviously quite high, 74%. And um, from interactions and the way that we um, receive engagement on our Facebook page, we would say that the majority um, of followers of our Facebook page are parent carers. And then with Twitter, again a breakdown of um, the percentages of um, male and female users engaging with us and also again very high in the mobile device visits there of 70%. With Twitter we have a, a real mixed audience, so we do um, have parent carers, uh, we also have uh, members of the voluntary sector, campaigners, professionals, public figures, support groups and parent care forums. So we've got um, third sector organisations, when we say voluntary sector, other charities, organisations like that who we interact with there as well. Um, and on YouTube, uh, as you can see, we've got about 381 subscribers. And uh, to date, since the YouTube channel has been set up, 173 and 85 views. And again, a breakdown of the age groups and the um, the demographics there. So that's just to give you an overview of um, who's engaging with us online and uh, who we're reaching currently with those platforms. Before we started this session we were looking at this slide and we were looking at the information on it and discussing the gender breakdown um, and one of the things we were talking about was the fact that Facebook is primarily female um, and quite often we find that men don't use Facebook as much um, but are more likely to use things such as Twitter and LinkedIn as their social media platforms. So that's just something to bear in mind if you're thinking about particularly trying to communicate to dads um, if there's any particular um, campaign or communication that you're trying to do. Okay, so again, this is just really to give you an introduction as to why people are using social media. And the reference for this is in the web link at the bottom. And you can see there is a wide range um, of reasons why people will access social media. Some of it from just passing the time, um, which I know I certainly do, um, when I'm sitting waiting to pick my daughter up from school. Um, but also lots of people use it to share information, to express their opinions, um, and also to find out information, to find out about other people, to find out what's going on. 
um, and also to the social interaction and engagement. Um, quite often parenting can be quite lonely and lots of people will use online um, platforms to actually interact and engage with other parents, uh, particularly parents that have got a similar um, experience or in a similar situation to themselves. So in terms of how a forum can use social media, there's a massive range of things that you can do. Um, and you can do all of these or a combination of them or just one or two, depending on how you feel that you um, are wanting to communicate to your parents. So that can range from the basic providing updates and information out to your parents or um, answering questions from parent carers who maybe are wanting to find out about local services or understand what the forum's doing. You can be promoting your events and activities or raising awareness of particular issues. But also it can be used, and I think this is one of the beauties of social media, is for that two-way interaction where you can actually seek feedback from parent carers before maybe you're going to um, co-production meetings with the local authority or health. And you can put up um, very quick polls or surveys um, or real-time chat and discussion posts. Um, and you can actually find out questions, um, even in a meeting if need be, um, to, to things so you actually have some evidence that you can put forward then to the local authority about what local parents are experiencing or concerned about. It also allows you to have a look at what trends are taking place on your own social media page, see what parents are asking about, um, and for you to then be able to identify trends and issues that will help you identify um, pieces of work that maybe your forum wants to proactively look at. So for instance, if you were to receive lots of queries about wheelchair services or how to access a particular therapy, it may indicate that there is a problem with that area and it's something that the forum could then work with health about. Um, and it's also something um, social media can be used to build relationships with parents locally, which then will lead on to um, recruiting members to your forum and also hopefully some new volunteers. Lexi Voice used Facebook to connect with over 317 parents in the Lexi Borough. It is a secret group and the reason it is secret is because so that whatever we post in our Lexi Voice Facebook page doesn't appear on our own wall um, for our neighbours and other friends to see because perhaps we don't want to share that with them. So and there's also the other issue of um, ex-husbands, ex-wives that perhaps we don't want to share so much information with. So that's why it's a secret group. So you can't search for us on um, Facebook, but you need to be given a link from one of the admin to be able to join. You need to be a member and you need to meet our criteria, which is you're living in Bexley, you've got a child aged um, 0 to 25 with a special need. Um, Bexley Boys Facebook page, we use it from all of the previous slides to do um, all of that information, to speak to our parents, to create a strong bond and to share information with each other. And it is very useful and very powerful, especially if any of us got any difficulties, we ask other parents who have been there, done that, got the t-shirt and know what they're talking about and they can advise us. We also use it to um, advertise local businesses um, with regard to our membership key fob, which means that if you're a member of Bexley Voice, you can apply for a free key fob like the Tesco's ones you get on your keys, and that gives us certain discounts to certain um, activities going on within the Bexley Borough. Bexley Voice also use um, social media to advertise for other voluntary groups. We work very um, in post co-production with all other charities within Bexley as well as nationally. There are a few mentioned there. We also advertise our upcoming seminars, workshops and that of other charities within the borough as well that might be of use or interest to our members. Bexley Voice, we use our social media to recruit volunteers. Um, one example of that is I asked recently on our Facebook page if anyone would like to come to a school visit um, to a local primary school with me and I had over 30 responses. So I've collated a list of those lovely volunteers and um, we'll work my way through them um, with other members of Bexley Voice to visit all the schools within Bexley 
to help parents and carers of our mainstream children. Uh, we are also due to lo launch our wiki. Um, you can look up wiki on ricksmedia.com um, and look at wikis for yourself. It's a wonderful tool to use for communicating, educating, sharing everything about your forum. Um, that's it. Okay, so in terms of the benefits um, to a forum for using social media, um, one of the, the main benefits is obviously that it's free. Um, the only cost to it is the fact that you have to commit time to it. Um, but there is actually no charge um, for using social media platforms. And it can give you a really wide reach, um, quite often reaching parents that wouldn't necessarily engage with the forum in any other way. Um, and that also includes your hard-to-reach families as well. Um, quite often families will have access to um, a mobile phone, not necessarily to have a computer or a laptop, but if they have a mobile phone, as you saw earlier in the presentation, it does mean that they can follow your social media accounts and engage with you um, and find out more about the forum and how their voice can be heard. Information on social media can be published um, very quickly and easily. Um, and it also can be easily shared. It's just literally the click of a button to share information. So if you sign up to other people's social media accounts as a forum, then you can also share, um, so for instance, the National Network's um, newsfeed or contact family or other organizations, rather than having to always generate content yourself. Um, and also, you can get immediate feedback from parents without having to organize an event. It's really easy uh, for you to use social media to gain views on a particular subject or a particular issue, and it's quicker and easier than having to set up a, a focus group. You can actually do many of the same things obviously, uh, that would take place in a focus group, but on the internet instead. And lastly, it's um, allowing you to use photos and videos as well as text and some level of interaction and engagement. Not everybody wants to read pages and pages of documents. Um, but you can actually um, use videos, put a, a video up on YouTube and then link to it on your Facebook account or your Twitter account. And um, it is important if you are using any photos um, that in particular if they have um, pictures of children uh, that you use a photo permission form and we will include a sample form in the handout when this webinar is put online. Okay, so the downsides of social media, it's not all um, positive. Um, and that's one of the things we want to cover in this webinar for you, is also to tell you some of the things that may go wrong and also um, to help you prepare for those. So it does take time and effort to build up a following. It's not as easy as just launching the Facebook page or a Twitter account and then hoping people will come to you. It requires um, an ongoing commitment from the forum to build that uh, page in terms of making sure there's interesting content, that you respond to posts, and also that you actively promote um, your social media platforms as well to encourage people to sign up. It does require moderation. Um, we all know about the angry parents that are out there and, and who have unfortunately been let down by um, processes or systems, um, or who are just struggling for whatever reason and want to have somewhere where they can air their grievances. Um, and also, there are people on the internet who are trolls and quite simply just get a kick out of saying something controversial and um, signing up to pages and posting things that are offensive. And um, so it's really important that you have processes in place that um, allow moderation of any platform that you have. Um, social media is 24-7. Um, it doesn't close, um, it doesn't um, take into account the school run or weekends or holidays, um, it's there all the time and um, parents can post on it all the time as well. So it is something that you have to be aware of um, in terms of the time commitment. It can be really difficult at times to get active discussion going or to secure feedback. Um, certainly I know from my experience at HPCN we have put questions out and have no responses at all, and um, it does happen. Um, so again, that, that's just working out your own audience, um, how they like questions to be phrased, 
um, what sort of things appeal to them, what issues are taking place um, for them locally. Likewise, it can be difficult to stop an active discussion. Um, going back to those angry parents, um, quite often um, it can be difficult once people get on the bandwagon of a particular topic or a particular theme. Um, everybody has a story that they want to tell. So again, moderation is really important in those times. Um, we said this was a positive, that information can be quickly and easily shared, but likewise that can be a downside of social media as well. Um, bad news can travel very fast at just the click of a button. Um, if there's something that's negative that has been said, for instance, about the forum, that can be quickly shared. We already mentioned earlier in the presentation that not everybody can access or indeed wants to access social media. I know that certainly I have friends who don't use social media at all um, because they don't like it. So it is important that if you're uh, developing the social media policy that you also look at other communication methods as well. And one other just added complexity, um, because we are all parents and we, we're all involved in parent care forums because um, we care about um, having parents' voices heard, we need to make sure that we also, as parents, have the opportunity to have our voices heard. But it's important for people who are using the page to know whether somebody is posting as themselves or as a representative of the forum, and whose message is it that um, they're responding to. Um, particularly if they, the people who are the officers of the forum are very well known locally, um, and they post something as themselves. But we will come on to that later in the presentation. Okay, so um, just got some general tips for posting on social media um, that you may find useful. So um, just a few bullet points really. So ensuring when you're posting that um, the posts are really relevant to your audience. Um, obviously you're going to know your, who you're speaking to and your target audience really well. So just to bear that in mind when you're posting and thinking about what will be most useful for them. And also timely, and what we mean by this is maybe if something is very time sensitive, um, that needs to be responded to quickly, that it's posted at the relevant points. Um, and also it may be that you are aware of when more users are online, which we'll come on to a bit later in terms of gaining that insight that, you know, posting at a particular time of the day, for example, and Sharon gave the example of the school run, you may be aware that a lot of parents are checking their Facebook whilst waiting to pick up their children. So that might, you might decide that that's a really good time to share something because people, you've got the most people logging, you know, who are online at that point. So knowing when your audiences are online and if appropriate and you've got the resource to do so, like sharing information and posts at good times for your audiences to take that information in. And also brief and easy uh, to understand, so to try and um, avoid any unnecessary jargon if possible. And also brief because, uh, again, it might be, uh, we talked before about people using mobile devices, people might just be scrolling through posts and having a quick look when they're grabbing five minutes or they're having a cup of tea or something like that. So um, the more brief and uh, impactful you can make that post, the more likely people are to engage with it and uh, uh, respond. Um, also, if you're posting on social media, you know, when appropriate, linking to your other social media presences or online platforms. So if someone's on your Facebook page, it should be easy for them to also um, link in with your Twitter uh, account, you know, because they may be interested in following you there, for example, or um, having information readily available about your website, because they might, might want to find out more about your organisation. They may want to get in touch via email, things like that. So just having that all readily available and accessible. And as we discussed before, um, use of images, infographics um, are very popular across social media. So if appropriate, um, using those to communicate your messages as well is another way of reaching people. And also, um, as we discussed, again, inviting feedback and comments, that two-way nature of social media is really powerful and can be um, really positive. So um, it's making sure that people know that you know, they are free to engage and it can be a two-way discussion. And also um, encouraging your users on your social media platforms to share links to your information and to your posts with their networks, um, if, if appropriate and relevant. Obviously, it depends on what you're using and how you're using that. Um, and in the handout, there'll be some suggested activities around posting on social media. 
So in, in terms of encouraging discussion and participation online, um, some key tips uh, is knowing what's relevant, as I mentioned, for your audiences. Now, um, you will probably just instinctively be aware of that um, and kind of know what is most important. Um, but you can also ask people um, directly, um, either through the face-to-face -face work that you do to get an idea, or actually on the platform itself, um, asking people for their feedback on what they'd most like to find out about, because um, that is the beauty of the, the two-way uh, interactive element of social media, is that you can say to your followers, your fans, your users, whoever is logging on and uh, who is following you, to say, okay, what would you be most interested in? Um, I think facilitating conversations in a warm and supportive way is really important. So just you're thinking about, um, want a better phrase, kind of your tone of voice when you're, you're posting online. Um, so kind of the way in which you um, start discussions or conversations, that kind of thing. And also giving users the space to express themselves. So really making the most of the two-way interactive element of social media platforms, making it really clear that, you know, people can... Um, come forward and post and share their experiences and also um, as I mentioned before as well providing a variety of ways for users to engage so some people will respond better to images or graphic you know um, graphics or infographics that kind of thing and visual representations of um, information and ideas you know others might prefer to listen to a podcast or watch a short video while some people will prefer to read an in-depth article so Obviously, different people engage in consumer information in their preferred way. So it's good if you can to either ask people what they would like or to provide information in a variety of ways so you're reaching different audiences in different ways. Um, and as I mentioned, that engagement, that, that two-way nature of social media, empowering people to take the lead, as I mentioned, um, asking users to share their experiences and um, also allowing them to take the lead on how the content shaped where appropriate. So as I mentioned, you could actually say on your platform, if relevant, you know, what would you most, over the next month, what would you most be interested in hearing about? So you can really directly ask that question. Um, yeah. Thanks, you boys. Start off our discussion, as um, has been said before, asking a question. Um, the question's then answered, possibly by... 30, 40 people giving their opinions and their views. Um, for example, uh, one of the questions we had recently was about a um, young adult um, joining with ADHD joining the police force. And as you can see, we had 11 replies to that parent um, suggesting different avenues to go down and have start by joining cadets or um, speaking to the police um, or the armed forces directly to see what they could do and how they could help. We had lots of questions about school exclusions and about dual diagnoses. And basically, we talk about anything and everything that is important to us as parents and carers with regard to our children's special needs. It's a really good format to be able to speak to people, not necessarily face-to-face, um, because we all haven't got the time, and it's at our own leisure, because sometimes at 9, 10 o'clock at night, we need to find an answer to one of our questions, post it on our Facebook page, and 9 times out of 10, you'll get a response, and know that somebody is listening to you, and there are people out there um, with similar experiences. Okay, so in terms of things for your committee to consider, and it's really important that you plan and decide how you're going to use social media um, rather than um, just letting everybody loose on it um, and having everybody posting random posts. It's an important part of your overall communication strategy. So when you're looking at how you're going to be promoting your forum, how you're going to be communicating with parents, um, build in how you're going to use social media. And we're going to include within the handout um, a table that talks about different outcomes that you're wanting to achieve and uh, suggestions for the best type of social media platform that you might want to try for that. You also would want to think about who can see the posts. Um, and Claire's already mentioned that the Bexley Voice uh, page is a private, no, secret page, which means that it can't actually even be found by anybody um, if they're looking on Facebook for it. 
Um, other options are um, private groups, which are ones that people can see the group exists, but they can't see any of the posts on it unless they're a member, or a public group or a public page where everything is open. And really, it depends on what you're wanting to use your social media for as to which one is going to be best for you and for your forum. Um, for example, we've already talked about Bexley, but Hampshire Parent Carer Network are on Facebook and it's a public page um, because it's being used in a very different way um, than Bexley Voice are using it. It's about engaging with parents and getting some feedback. I think um, certainly the benefit of having a private or a secret group is that parents feel that they can be more honest and open if they know that they're only speaking to other parents. Um, but in Hampshire, um, there are other groups for that. Um, there are other charities that provide that parent support, and Hampshire Parent Care Network's role is, is purely around participation. It's also worth thinking about um, whether you're going to limit your social media presence um, to parent carers only, which again, Bexley have done, or whether you're also wanting there to be um, a wider audience. So for instance, you're happy for the local authority or health partners to see some of the comments, and also whether you're happy for them to actually join in the conversation and engage as well. Um, and that really is for your committee to decide how you want to use social media. You need to decide as well who's going to be responsible for producing any social media content and what those messages are going to be and how they're decided. Um, and again, as I say, it sort of ties into your overall communication strategy. Bexley Boys decided back in 2011, just after our launch in 2010, that we needed to contact more parents and carers within Bexley in a non-paper way. Facebook was an instant choice for us, and it reaches more members. As has been said before, it is timeless. It has no time restrictions. You can be on Facebook at 3 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, doesn't suit everybody, but it definitely suits Bexley and our forum because it is varied and it is flexible. Um, when we set up building our Bexley Voice Facebook group, um, we adapted our membership forms to have a tick box to say yes, they would like to be a member of Bexley Voice Facebook page. We then discussed it with parents and carers as to what was going to happen um, within that um, forum. The, we had lots and lots of memberships and um, our parent carers wanting to join to talk to other parents. As I said, other parents who've been there, they've got the same um, diagnosis as their child. We know every child's different and unique. But sometimes there's similarities, and definitely when dealing with professionals and speech therapists and um, occupational therapists, there's a process to go through. So it's asking other parents of their views and their opinions. We needed a moderator and admin on our social media pages, mainly to keep the posts um, fresh and up to date, to be able to comment and to make sure that all parents' comments um, and threads and posts on the Facebook page do get acknowledged um, because there's nothing worse than putting a post up there and nobody responding to you. So we definitely make sure that everyone um, has a response, even if it's, I don't know the answer to that, I'll find that out for you. Um, so the posts are monitored and we're checked. And as has been said before, it is 24-7, so we can't monitor it and moderate it every second of the day, but we do do our best. We've now got over 318 members, and people are always asking, Bexley Voice members are always asking to join our Facebook page. Sometimes they put, well, people post on themselves, and there's no um, admin or management committee input needed, and the parents talk to each other, and we just um, keep an eye on what's, what's being said. Okay, so we've mentioned this a couple of times in terms of um, social media policy, and we will include a sample policy in the handout. And um, This is just really setting out um, in writing how your forum plans to use social media. And you need to make sure that it is agreed by your committee and that it is reviewed regularly. It's really important that all committee members and any members of staff that you employ and any volunteers that might be involved in your forum work are familiar with it and also agree to abide by it. 
Um, and your actual social media policy should link into, um, as well as your communications policy, also if you have a code of conduct or any confidentiality documents, that should also link into those. And you may wish to refer to social media in those documents as well. So why is it important to have social media policy? Well, it gives consistency for everyone to work to. Everybody knows what they should be doing and, most importantly, what they shouldn't be doing on social media. The policy should reflect your wider ethics and your approach to your work as an organisation. Um, and it's also a policy, then, that you can refer users to when you're moderating. Um, I'm a moderator um, on a completely unrelated, um, unrelated to disability. It's a, a shoe selling page. And we have our rules, and, and it's really easy to just go back and, and say, have a look at this, have a look at the policy, have a look at the rules, when people question why certain things have been moderated in a particular way. And most importantly, the social media policy is there to protect your forum and also the people who are involved in volunteering or working for you. So um, in terms of what um, you should be looking to um, put into your social media policy obviously that will depend on the forum and how you're using social media and um, but the kind of things broadly speaking that it can contain are basically your your aims and what your online community is for for example to provide information and advice um, who your moderators are um, and also what responsibilities have been delegated to the moderators so um, linking into that, how moderators should respond to different posts, for example, queries, complaints, or discussions. So um, for example, um, with Contact the Family's Facebook page, we would respond to any queries from parent carers within um, one working day. So that's our approach, but obviously it will depend on, on the forum and how you run your social media. And also identifying key staffing dependencies and escalation procedures. So, for example, if a safeguarding issue were to um, come up in your social media platform, who this is then escalated to and, and how that's dealt with so that it's easy, it's there to refer to. So if anyone is moderating your online platform, you know the way to proceed if, if something does come up. Um, also identifying what's, what's not acceptable within the online communities and how that would be um, dealt with, essentially. Um, so the policies and procedures around how you would uh, respond to that if something came up. Um, and also just any other guidance that relates to confidentiality, data protection, or other key policies or governance that your, your forum may have. Um, and also when the page is moderated and by who. Um, so just being really clear, you know, the page is going to be moderated within these hours by um, Ex, you know, whoever's non nominated, or it may just outline moderators, you know, and then it may change depending on, on who um, you have at that point who's uh, looking at your social media platforms. So in terms of community guidelines, essentially the community guidelines is what is publicly available um, on your platforms or easily um, referred to, to for use on your platforms by anyone who's using them. So essentially, it'd be drawing key points from your social media policy that you use for internal purposes to share with the wider community. So this could include, again, what the page is for and who runs it, what members um, uh, are, are, are able to do and not do within the community, and what posts are acceptable and not acceptable. So essentially, what your, what your aims are and what the page is there for, and then also um, what wouldn't be OK. Um, and then guidance on complaining. If, so if users were to have an, an issue maybe uh, with anything uh, relating to um, what, what your online platform represents, they know very simply and easily how to raise that issue and, and what um, lines to go down. So it's very clear that if there is an issue, then uh, they'll be able to raise it in a certain way so it can be dealt with most appropriately. Uh, like I said before, when the page is moderated and who by, that just manages expectations so that people know if they post at a particular time and they don't receive an immediate response, they know that will be because at that point the page isn't moderated. However, the page is moderated at other times, so they know when to expect a response and engagement um, from the moderators. And also links to um, the organization's website and other contact details. So it might be that actually they'd like to send you an email um, regarding something, or they might like to give you a, a call if appropriate, so they know how to easily find other contact details for you. 
and also a reminder of um, confidentiality and any safeguarding statements um, that link to your, your policies, obviously, as a forum. So in terms of um, online community management and moderation, uh, a broad definition is an online community manager is someone who builds, grows, and manages online communities, and often around a brand or cause. And so they may serve a variety of roles depending on the nature and purpose of the online community to begin with. So really, um, an online community manager's role is a facilitator. I think as um, uh, Sharon and, and uh, Claire have both mentioned, you don't always need to, you know, sometimes it's uh, people who are using the online platform who generate discussion and share ideas with each other. And so it's for you to facilitate that, really. You don't always need to interject necessarily. It might be you're just there to start a discussion, facilitate a discussion, and allow people to um, link up and discuss uh, ideas with each other. Yeah, and you're also there to monitor the activity that's happening in the online communities. And as I mentioned before, when appropriate, intervene in discussions. So if something comes up and maybe contravenes the uh, guide guidelines and community guidelines for your page, you may need to intervene just to reiterate the, uh, the guidelines. Um, and also uh, to make posts on behalf of the organizational group and take a lead on really generating content. As Claire mentioned, keeping the content fresh on the page so it's relevant, so it's timely. Um, and also there to deal with and escalate any issues as per the processes we've kind of already outlined in the social media policy. So the forums community manager would be somebody who has um, delegated responsibility from the committee. Um, and it may be that you don't have just one person who's a community manager, but you have a number of moderators that have that delegated responsibility. And in terms of how, what this looks like for a parent care forum, um, it's somebody who, um, as Neely has just said, is making posts on behalf of the forum um, and asking for feedback, but also responding to feedback and questions. Um, but one of the other important things is about collating information from your social media, obviously within the, um, the guidelines of, of the privacy and the confidentiality, so making sure that it's anonymous if need be, um, but sharing information with the committee um, to help the parent care forum become more effective in your role as um, an organization that's looking at co-production. Um, so that can be sharing interesting news articles um, or information from other organizations that they've found on social media, um, looking at parental feedback and any trends and issues that are being raised, and obviously the results from any surveys or polls. Um, but most importantly, um, the role is somebody who really is a protector, both of the forum and of the parents who are using the page, who sometimes can be quite vulnerable parents. So who should take on this role? Well, it can be anybody, really. Um, if you have paid members of staff, you may want to um, build this into their role. You may have, um, within your forum, somebody who's responsible for communications. Um, or it could just be specific um, committee members who volunteer and say, actually, I'm on Facebook all the time. And um, so I'm quite happy to take this role on for the forum. Ideally, it should be somebody who is familiar with um, the particular social media platform um, that they're going to be moderating and looking after, purely because it just makes it a lot easier. If you know your way around the social media platform, you know how to report things, you know how to delete things, and you know how to share things easily, it just makes the role a, a lot easier. Um, and as I said, probably it's best to have more than one person as, as taking on that moderation role, so that it's not somebody having to do it all the time on different days. Um, but also, if you have more than one moderator, then it's useful so that you can actually discuss if there's contentious issues that come up or if there are any problems on the page, and then you can decide how to deal with those posts together rather than it falling on one person. Um, and also such succession planning in terms of, um, we all know that, again, that people in forums will often volunteer for one or two years and then move on. So if you have more than one person who's moderating, then you can actually rotate that role around. In terms of skills that they need, um, it will be up to um, you to decide who's the best person um, for, um, for the role. 
Um, but it needs to be somebody really who is able to and happy to deal with um, quite sensitive situations and information, particularly if you have a page such as the one um, that Bexley have where it's a secret group and parents are, are posting personal information about themselves and about their children. That's needed less so if it's a public page because people tend to um, not post as much personal information. It needs to be somebody who really understands what the forum is about and what parent participation and co-production is about so that they can see the opportunities in the social media um, and they can also um, understand how the forum can use the platform um, to help um, improve engagement and to improve participation. So they know what questions to ask to seek feedback because they understand what feedback it is that they are looking for as a forum. It would be useful for the person to have some local knowledge about where to signpost parents to for further information, even if that's just to um, key statutory organisations um, or other local charities. And somebody who you're happy to be the face of your forum and to represent your organisation probably with um, very little additional supervision um, because they have to respond um, immediately when they're on social media. So it has to be somebody that you feel you can trust to represent your forum in the way that you want your forum to be represented online. I think we've, we've probably already covered this slide as to why you need a moderator. Um, one of the, the really important things is to make people feel welcome and to feel that um, they're an important part of the online community, their views are um, important, and um, that people don't feel that they are even more isolated um, within the group. Um, we all know that there can be particularly online cliques um, and groups that form friendship groups, and one of the roles of the moderator is to make sure that people who are new, who come along to your Facebook group or your Twitter feed, feel as welcome as the people who have been there for a long time. So it's around them um, providing help and support to users, promoting interaction, and as we've already talked about, removing any posts that um, fall outside of your guidelines. So in terms of what um, good or effective moderation looks like, I think ideally that the community is really, uh, your online community is really meeting your aims as you outlined in your social media policy. So what you want the page to achieve, it's getting there. Um, that users are engaging and regularly using the community for the purposes outlined, so for the, um, the purposes that you set it out to achieve. Um, good moderation is also responsive. So you're really listening to your online audiences as well and maybe adapting your approaches or the nature of your posts as appropriate, um, when appropriate, um, taking on board that feedback. And active listening as well, so when responding to posts, really being mindful of um, how the person has, has shared their experiences and really reflecting that back when appropriate and really demonstrating that you're really receiving what, what they're saying and what they're sharing. Um, you can also use social media analytics tools, for example, Facebook Insights or Twitter Analytics, to really get to understand your audience and their online behaviours. Um, so you can really best meet their needs. So as I mentioned before, timing can be quite important. Um, and using those kind of tools, you can see general trends as to when uh, the majority of your followers or users are online, for example. So you might gain an understanding um, as to when a good time to post may be because you've got uh, a lot of people online at that point, for example. Okay, so which hat are you wearing? Um, Social media and social networking are often used um, both personally and professionally. And certainly if you are having a moderator who is a big social media user themselves, they'll be wanting to use social media themselves for their own personal aims as well. Sometimes it's not clear um, where the, the split is between personal and professional. And when committee members or members of staff are posting, um, are all responding to posts, are they posting as themselves or are, are they posting on behalf of the forum? So what we want to do is just very quickly talk about how you can address that. It's just one suggestion um, of how you can actually approach this. Um, firstly, we've talked about linking your social media usage to your overall um, code of conduct and communications protocol. So I don't think we need to, to go over that again. But what um, some forums do 
is set up a social media account, say for instance, say um, Bexley um, Chair or Bexley Communications Manager, and, and that that person then will be the person who sets up the page for Bexley Forum. Um, this means that when people are responding to those questions on social media, that the answers are actually coming from Bexley Forum Chair or Bexley Forum Communications Manager, rather than it being from um, Claire or Sharon or Amelia. And it also gives that person then the opportunity to then post as Claire or Sharon as Amelia um, to respond as a parent rather than to respond um, as a forum as well. The main benefit of this, apart from the fact that it allows your um, volunteers and your workers to respond as themselves as well as on behalf of the forum, is that the account and the page or the Facebook group or the Twitter account is not then reliant on individuals staying involved because it's the forum that owns the account and not a particular individual. So you can simply change the login when somebody changes role and somebody else becomes responsible for logging in using that uh, Facebook name or that Twitter account. It's also important um, to have a look at when um, you have committee members who are also very well known locally and the posts that they are making from their own personal accounts. And obviously you can't dictate what anybody posts on their own personal account, but sometimes there can be some confusion, particularly on platforms such as Twitter, as to whether that person, if they're, for instance, they're moaning about a particular service or provision, whether they're doing that as themselves or whether they're doing that um, using their, their forum position. So things that you can do, as we've already talked about, is making sure that individual accounts and forum accounts are separate. But also, disclaimers can be used by individuals on their own personal accounts along the lines of, these views are my own and are not representative of any organization I'm personally involved in, or something to that effect. Um, and also, when people are using social media for their own personal use, they should actually consider about how their own posts are going to be viewed online and just be careful. It's in the same way that teachers are encouraged not to use social media because parents may see posts that they um, are posting. So people should consider their own privacy settings, make sure that their own accounts are, are locked down, particularly if they're going to be saying something that is slightly controversial. Um, and just really the, the last comment on here, it literally takes seconds to screenshot a comment and then to share it with others. And things can go around the internet very, very quickly. Um, and that's something that always should be um, considered. But even if something is in a private group, it can still be shared uh, widely without people wanting it to be. OK, so one of the examples of things um, where there could be a difficult situation, um, libel. Um, social media can be used, and is frequently used, particularly Twitter, um, to complain about a service or an organization or an individual. Um, we see it all the time when people haven't got their Tesco delivery or they're wanting to know about Royal Mail. Um, they complain on Twitter and things get sorted very, very quickly. The same applies people want to know about services, the local authority, and they might even want to know about your forum as well on um, social media. And some of these comments could be libelous, and that's if they are um, defamatory in, in a written form, and there can be legal repercussions. So it's really important that when the forum is sharing information that others have written, for instance, clicking retweet on a, on a post on Twitter or sharing a blog post, that actually you know that what you're sharing is factual and true, and that you're not putting yourself in a position where you could actually be li um, liable for the fact that you've shared something that's libelous. Um, there's a link here, um, and also this obviously will come out in the handout, so that you can look for more information about this. It's also important to think about um, when your staff members leave, um, if somebody, or your committee members, um, if somebody has previously had delegated responsibility for social media, um, you need to make sure that they are no longer posting um, on behalf of your forum. So that generally means you need to change the password so that they no longer access it. Um, this is really and particularly important um, if they've left um, due to uh, conflict or under difficult circumstances. 
I know of an example of one forum where um, a number of members left at um, the AGM, they stepped down from their positions, new officers were in place, but none of them could access their social media account and the previous members were still posting. Um, it's really important that passwords should be changed as soon as you know people are leaving or in advance if you know that they're likely to be leaving sometime soon. This also ties in with the fact that it is useful for more than one person to have access to your social media account and your passwords um, so that you have that um, ability to sign into those accounts and remove people yourself. Um, which is what I've just said. Um, so making sure that more than one person knows your passwords um, and that you also document your delegated rights to social media usage in your minutes. Um, this is so that if you need to contact somebody such as Facebook or Twitter to say, we own this account and these people shouldn't be using it anymore, um, then you actually have some written evidence of that. Um, and then there are password services, here's just one example, um, which is a website that will store all of your passwords and it allows you to quickly and easily change your passwords if somebody needs. I know a lot of companies use this type of um, service so that when members of staff move, they can quickly change their passwords. Okay. Dealing with trolls, I'm going to try and speed up because we only have five minutes left. Um, we mentioned trolls earlier in the presentation. Um, this is somebody, not necessarily who is an angry parent, um, but somebody who might just be deliberately trying to stop the work you're doing. And it can be um, somebody who has a grievance with the forum, somebody who has a grievance with the local authority, or it might be a 15-year-old boy who is bored and sitting on his Facebook um, just wanting to have fun. Um, and there are some examples here, and we will make sure that this, this comes out to you um, as to how to actually deal with trolls. Um, if you think it is a parent and it's somebody who um, has a grievance, one of the most important things is actually to, to listen to them and to see what it is that they're wanting to say. Um, because actually sometimes it can just be that people are posting in a particular way because they are completely frustrated and haven't been able to get any help or support anywhere else. It's also important to remember that when you're responding to anybody, whether they're a troll or a disgruntled parent, that your response isn't just for them, it's also for the other people that are on the page. So they can see how you are actually responding to parents and being um, sympathetic and helpful. Um, and also, stay calm, um, because if you can show the troll that you're not going to be ruffled by them, um, then hopefully they won't bother you in the future. So, one common phrase that you hear on the internet is, don't feed the troll. Um, often the best response is to ignore people. Um, if you found that they definitely are a troll, if you realize it really is a 15-year-old boy who's just wanting to have some fun, just ignore them, delete their posts. Um, if you don't give any attention, if you don't rise to the bait, um, they'll go somewhere else for the, the fun and for their kicks. If somebody has posted information that is factually wrong, um, again, don't respond in an emotional way. Just clearly and objectively correct any misinformation um, and reply in a, in a very calm way. If you do find yourself getting upset, if you find yourself um, getting more emotionally involved, take a step away. You don't have to respond immediately. If you feel that you're being threatened or your children are being threatened, though, you must contact the police immediately. Um, and the other thing to remember is the delete and the block button is there for a reason. Um, that doesn't mean that your forum is not allowing parents their views. Um, if something is abusive then, or offensive to members of the community, it is absolutely acceptable on social media to block people and to delete them. And there is, again, there's a link here with, with more information. And when you're dealing with difficult situations, it's really important, we talked about this at the beginning, to have guidelines as to what's acceptable on the page. And if you can get users to sign up in advance to the rules or to just post on, a, on the rules post to say, agree to these rules, then that's really useful. Um, have your responses built into your publicly available guidelines so people know the type of things you're going to say. We've talked about deleting uh, comments and material as soon as you can if it's offensive. And the last post here is really important. 
quite often responding in a light-hearted way can just relieve the tension um, and diffuse a difficult situation that's developing. So it's important as well that your users know how to report offensive material um, and that um, if there is a complex issue or is there, there is a complaint, um, take that offline and um, provide the, the person who's, who's posting the messages with another method of contacting you or agree to phone them or meet them or um, put a, your email address on so that there is a way for them to actually feel that you're not just deleting their post, but they do have another um, route for their voice to be heard. Um, as has been said before, any really negative or challenging or difficult posts, we do delete them. I then, or another one of the admin, um, will contact that the person who's posted it to find out what actually is the problem, what's the root cause, and how we can help that's what we're there for, but not necessarily to have lots of hieroglyphics on the page, um, especially if there's been abusive language. So we will delete posts like that. Um, as I said before, anything that you actually type on to a um, forum, on a public media site, and onto social media, can be read eight different ways. For example, I never said he stole that money. So I never said it, somebody else said it. If you emphasize each one of those words yourselves, so I never said he stole that money, um, you'll read it in a different way, or if somebody else reads it for you, we all read things and put our own inter interpretation onto things. So give that a try. Um, I've had that quote given to me quite a few times um, in seminars and workshops that I've been on, and it's really effective just to show you the difference of face to face, you can judge um, and read what a person's saying to you, but when it's typed and it's a written word, you can read it lots of different ways. So just bear that in mind. You might take offense to somebody's post, but that might not be how they meant it. So as I say to all of our Facebook users, if you've taken offense, don't literally just go back and splurt and rant off back to the person who's um, posted. Contact the admin and say, did they mean that like, like that? And then we can follow it up for you so that there's not um, any complaints. Um, yeah, we've had lots of bad mouthing, lots of swearing, and um, all we say is turn your frown upside down, make it into a smile, um, and we're all there to help each other, keep it all positive, and if it is abusive and it gets reported, it does get deleted. Okay. These are just some um, fun social media facts because we were coming to the end of the presentation and we realised it was all a little bit depressing at the end, talking about all of the difficulties and the problems that um, you may have. So these are just um, some things. So when um, Baby George was born, there were um, 40,000 additional fans joined um, the British Monarchy's account. Um, in the UK, social media addiction is recognised as a medical medical condition. I think I may actually have that. Um, and women far um, far use more social media um, than men in the UK. Um, and just finally, Adele is the most followed account in the UK. There's lots and lots of these fun social media facts that are on this link here for you to have a look at. So to summarise before we get on to some of the questions, um, social media is a really important communications platform for forums to use. Um, there are lots of benefits, but there are also a number of pitfalls. So it's really important to plan ahead and to think about how you're going to use social media and to put policies and guidelines in place. Um, social media policy certainly should be developed, which will clarify how you're going to use your social media and how you will deal with tricky situations. And that needs to link to your other policies. Um, and the role of moderator is indeed key. Okay, so we have some questions that come through. Um, we had one that was sent in advance of the session um, that Amelia is going to answer, and then we're going to have a look at the others that have come through. Um, we do realise that we are now over time, um, so we'll answer these for the next five or ten minutes or so, um, and apologise that we are running over, um, but we will make sure the answers to all of the questions are put online with the handout when this goes live next week. 
So the first question that came in says, my problem is how to use social media. Is there a webinar about how to track Facebook and Twitter and all of the changes? Who can I contact to find out more each time things change on these sites and how can I keep up with all of the changes? Um, well, I think uh, one general tip is that um, both Twitter and Facebook have um, help centres and they will be the most up to date because they're obviously run by the organisations that run the platforms. So you can go to support.twitter.com for Twitter help and for Facebook, facebook.com forward slash help. Um, so basically if you go there they've got some great um, help information tips about any questions you have regarding using Facebook including groups and pages as well. Um, so that will obviously be very relevant if you're running a Facebook group or page. And um, the other kind of thing that I'd say most generally is yeah, it does, um, social media platforms do tend to um, evolve and change as they go on. So if you're able to be uh, frequently kind of using the platforms, hopefully that will help you to get more confident and more comfortable with using them. And when changes pop up, you will kind of see that as you go along. But like I say, those two... Um, support areas are really great just to answer um, FAQs and things like that if you're starting out and or unsure of the changes that have gone on since you've been using the platforms. Okay, um, the next question I will try and answer. Um, how do I follow up something from three months ago uh, to follow up an issue that was raised? Is there an easy way to do a search? Um, normally within a Facebook group or page, um, if you are accessing it through um, a web browser, there is a search button on the top right hand side. And um, that doesn't always apply if you're using um, an app um, to access Facebook. Sometimes um, there is a search button, sometimes there isn't. I know when I access my Facebook using my iPhone, I have um, a search button. When I use my iPad, I don't. Um, there's a really useful app which is called Facebook's Facebook Groups app, um, which has a search functionality on it. Um, so if you download that, then you can actually access all of your groups that you're signed up to, and then you can quickly search, and again, it's the top right-hand side of that um, application. In terms of Twitter, um, there is um, a search box on Twitter, but it will search the whole of Twitter rather than your own feed, I believe. Um, yeah, so the search functionality within Twitter itself um, if you're looking for your posts, um, you can go into your Twitter analytics to look at your tweets over a period of time. You can choose the period of time um, and you can export that as a, an Excel. So if you were to export, um, say you know the month that the post was written in um, on Twitter, uh, on the, tweet that, the month that the tweet was written in, you could export that month's data into an Excel and then keyword search the Excel spreadsheet within Twitter. Okay. Um, the next question says, do you include something in your policy for those of us who are both carers and professionals as there could be conflicts of interests or is that covered under confidentiality for social media being used? I think absolutely something should go into the social media policy um, around that. Um, but we've talked about how it's really important that you um, are able to identify whether you're posting on behalf of the forum or whether you're posting as a parent carer yourself. But certainly it does also link to your confidentiality policies as well. So anything that you wanted to add to that? No? Okay. And Bexley, do you include anything? We certainly do, yes. If you are a professional but also a parent carer, then you need to be wearing the correct hat uh, when using the forums. Um, the next question, do you have any guidance on sharing photos of events on Facebook? Um, permission granted, please. Um, we will put a photo permission form, a sample one, online. Um, and if we can find any guidelines as well, we will add that too. Um, the important thing is to make sure that when people are coming to your events, that if they're going to have their photo taken and you want to put it on social media, that you get their explicit permission for that. Um, and that could be as simple as when they're booking um, for um, the event, then you can put something on it to say if you don't want to um, have your photo taken, tick this box. I know um, I've certainly been to national network um, events where people have a particular colour sticker if they don't want their photograph to be taken and put online. 
So that's an option for you that you could actually say, anybody who doesn't want their photo will wear this particular sticker and then they won't be photographed and have their photo online. We also have it built into our membership forms as well as a tick box to say, um, yes, they want to join Bexley Voices Facebook group. It's, there's a tick box to say, yes, they don't mind any of their um, photographs um, with them being present in it, our workshops or seminars being posted online to um, share with other parents. Okay, a question now for Claire. Um, would Bexley Voice be happy to let staff from another parent care forum join your closed Facebook page to get a better idea of how it works? We would have to discuss that privately um, via email, but there may be a possibility and it would be for a limited time only. The next question, as a moderator, what if they are getting involved in a difficult conversation? So, if a moderator is getting involved in a difficult conversation themselves, how would you suggest that a forum deals with that? Um, well, obviously the way that the forums run their online platforms is down to their governance and sort of their decisions as to how they do that. And as, as you mentioned, as Claire mentioned, this, the discussion around the hats. Um, certainly, as an online community moderator, it would always be a matter of um, referring to and using the social media policy and the community guidelines that would really dictate how you would um, engage with uh, discussions on your online platforms. So you would always be sticking to and using that guidance. And that's obviously, that's shaped by the forum, so that's the individual forum to decide how, how they shape that. But it would always be referring to that, so you're consistent in your approach, which is especially helpful if there are several moderators, you're all referring to the same guidelines consistently, which is really important. It is difficult, though, because you have to make sure that your reply to a post is, this is my opinion, me, myself, Claire, not the opinion of the Bexley Voice or the Care Forum. So it is difficult, but there is always, as Amelia said, more than one moderator on, um, especially if an evening on our Facebook group, and they can help. And as has been said before, if you diffuse the situation with um, hugs, which we often do, um, and um, a positive note, then hopefully the moderator doesn't get um, too involved as well. Okay, so we've got another question. All forum accounts are linked to my personal account. We've got a big following, but um, is it worth restarting the accounts again for safety and security reasons? Um, normally what you can do is, if you were to set up an account, um, a personal account for, as I said, forum chair or whatever you wanted it to be so that it's a a forum account, you can normally add those accounts onto any group page um, and then make them the key um, administrator for that page and then remove your personal accounts from it. Certainly I know when I was involved with um, Hampshire Parent Care Network, I set up the page myself, um, but then when I stepped down from my role as chair, I added other people to it, gave them administrator rights, and then I removed myself from the page. And um, If that doesn't answer the question, um, send in another question to us or contact contact family and we will try and answer that question um, in some more depth. We do have two other questions but I'm not sure how we're doing for time so I think we'll probably have to end this here but we will make sure that we put those questions online with some answers for you and if anybody has any other questions if you do want to send them through we will make sure they also get answered as well. So we'd just like to say thank you to you um, for um, joining us today and um, joining us with this webinar. We hope that it's been useful. As I said, if you do have any more questions, please do um, get in touch with us. There will be um, a questionnaire that will launch when this webinar finishes, and we would be really grateful if you could complete that just to give us some feedback. Um, and if I could just say thank you to Amelia and Claire for um, their contributions today as well. Thank you very much.